Good morning, everybody. It is Ellen Silverstein, president of the Maryland Society of Accounting and Tax Professionals. We're here this morning with my good friend, Julie Weaver from the Maryland Council on Economic Education. So uh, welcome, Julie, happy to have you today. It's all uh, very interesting. We're still struggling through these strange and extraordinary times, trying to uh, navigate what lies ahead for all of us. Uh, we're slowly getting back to business um, and Montgomery County, I know, has not. They're still on the uh, stay at home orders versus the safer at home uh, per the governor's uh, change in that. So, uh, and where are you, Julie? What county? I'm actually in Carroll County. Oh, Carroll. So there you go. And are they doing the safer at home versus stay at home? We are at the safer at home, although okay. our offices are in Baltimore County, which is yeah. on stay at home order so yeah, there you go very so, tenuous yes yes yeah. so we're really struggling to get through so i'm going to get julie to start talking about what she does with maryland council on economic education and how msatp has been helping and would like to continue to provide assistance to their group in uh, spreading the uh, good gospel really about financial literacy because it's really really important for our students and young adults to learn about what that means uh, and how it impacts their lives from the time they get out and get on their own uh, early college all the way through and how that can be um, manifest itself in their adult life when they go to buy homes and cars and things like that. So it's really, really critical. So thank you, Julie, for joining us today and tell us a little bit about MCEE. Sure. Thank you, Ellen. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to come and talk about the Maryland Council on Economic Education. Um, I'm <clears throat> to um, share some news with you today about what's happening in financial literacy in our schools, um, as well as ways that we can work together. Um, we've had a very successful partnership and I'm hoping to expand that and would love to expand that with your members as well if they have an interest in this area and want to get more involved. I'm going to sure. share my screen if that's okay. Yep. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see um, see some information while I'm talking. And hopefully, Ellen, can you see? Yep. Screen? I sure can. We're good. Thanks. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Maryland Council on Economic Education, we are an affiliate organization to the National Council on Economic Education. So many states have a state affiliate, and our role is to promote economic and personal finance education in K through 12 schools. So we work through the school systems, um, including uh, private and parochial schools as well, um, to bring resources and tools and activities to help make the job of educating our students about these very important matters um, easier. And we also train teachers because that is a something that we think is often overlooked is that we expect teachers to know this and and I'll bet through your individual practices, you may know plenty of teachers who may not be the best at managing their uh, financial lives. So we impact the teachers and bring their skills up to date so that they can impact the students, not just for one year, but for their entire career. So by investing in a teacher, um, we can impact thousands of students really over the course of the time that they're working in the classroom. Which is really awesome. So Sandy Steinwell, the executive director at MSATP and I have actually had an opportunity to speak a couple of times to different teachers, teacher groups, and actually mm -hmm. expand their knowledge on financial literacy uh, objectives and it was really really helpful uh, they loved it so uh, we yeah. were hoping to do more and then you know with, uh, COVID it, that obviously isn't happening at the moment but <laughs> we're, we're gonna work yeah. we're gonna figure out a way to work through that so yeah and I think you know this um, pandemic has really brought forth the lack of financial knowledge in our state I think it's bringing it to the forefront mm. all ill-prepared our citizens are for emergencies and mm -hmm. you know overextended people have become on credit and they're um, just misunderstanding of how to manage their financial lives so i think um, this is a great year to um, get the word out more about the need for financial education just because some people are hurting right now yes uh, you're so right and it would be so impactful if we could really get that message heard 
mm -hmm. louder and stronger in every county, actually. So yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. We um, appreciate Garrett how County to Ocean City. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's needed everywhere. Everywhere. Exactly. So I'm going to flip to the next slide. So I apologize. Let's see. There we go. So our work really, as I mentioned before, is in three key areas. So first we focus on teachers and we're really trying to provide them with the resources and training to help them from kindergarten to 12th grade. A lot of people think that um, you really focus on financial education in high school where the high school students um, are closest to sort of entering the real world, real world, they may have their first job. So um, there's a lot of people who think that that's where financial education belongs. But we actually believe that you really need to take a building block approach and start when the kids are really little and um, build year after year after year so that by the time they are in high school, the skills are really there and it's much more natural. And at that point, um, they're really um, feeling a lot more confident about mm -hmm. making decisions about college loans, about um, their first job, possibly filing taxes for the first time if they're working, whether or not they need to file taxes. Um, on that front, it's actually interesting. In your world, I um, got a, a call from an outside party this week, and they were really um, asking me about filing the FAFSA for financial aid and whether or not um, someone has to file taxes, uh, a student, I should say, mm -hmm. prior to file taxes before um, completing the FAFSA. And they, they had no idea. Right. And, but, you no, know, I don't think it's required, but I do. Um, if they have income, they obviously do need to, if that's if it's necessary. Right. So, yeah, yeah that's a whole big piece. I will tell you, when my kids were little and they're now in their um, early 30s, they uh, in kindergarten or first grade, at least they started with a savings account plan through the school that the local mm -hmm. bank had set up. It was Chevy Chase back in the day. But yeah. Um, that they had set up and that's how we got started basically with the financial literacy from that point. So that is really impactful. It's like learning math, basically, mm -hmm. you know, you want to start at the, with the basics and work your way up to calculus. And so um, in this sense, financial literacy does start at an early age. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. And so in the um, preparing teachers world, we do webinars, we do workshops, we typically have a conference, which we're trying to figure out right now how to take that onto a virtual platform. Um, we do school-based financial literacy nights. We organize volunteers to speak to kids. And we also curate resources so that teachers um, can trust us to provide them with the right lesson for the right topic, instead of them having to struggle to look through a million different resources to find the right way to teach a lesson on credit. Um, we can give that to them by curating all of the free resources that are out there. And there are a lot. I mean, we, we do benefit as a, as a society from having a lot of information online, but trying to figure out what is correct what is most pertinent to what they're trying to teach um, and what's gonna have the best application is really challenging for teachers, especially now as our schools are really in a chaotic situation, mm -hmm. pandemic of having to go um, to a, a web-based platform. Teachers are trying to learn that. We don't need them to, on top of that, have to try to struggle for four hours to try to find the right lesson online to teach right. them. And you do have lots of great resources, which you and I were discussing. Mm -hmm. And I do think that some of those resources would be available to our members as well um, sure. that they could use with various groups or subgroups that they may be participating in. Uh, so to reach out to you mm -hmm. and to your organization to, um, uh, based on our partnership with you, that those resources could be available. So, and that would be perfect if, if that's something that our members are participating in and need that assistance and need some guidance or resources to actually complete those tasks for themselves. So I will also mention that the um, Maryland Society, when we do our Business Builders Connection Conference or what was our solo and small firm conference, mm -hmm. we participate in the stock market game. <laughs> we actually right. set up a group and we actually played um, just on our own for fun. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and it was it's a really great experience just to figure out, you know, what should I buy? What should I buy? And who's ahead? And 
who picked the better ones or whatever. And right, um, exactly. So it's been kind of fun. We we had a larger group this year, and so we're hoping to obviously do that again. Um, our conference is set for November, which would be right right about the right time, I think, to join that that experience mm -hmm. again. So pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, and the stock market game is part of what we consider sort of our second bucket of uh, of resources, and that is we offer programs for students that offer what I consider transformational learning. So there's a lot of, you know, one day, one activity types of learning, but we don't really feel like that changes behavior, and that's really what we're after is long-term behavioral change. So the stock market game is one of the backbone student programs and adult programs as well uh, that we use to help um, kids learn fundamentals that really stick with them. And we start the stock market game in the fourth grade, which in coming to the organization, I really could not really grasp the idea of eight year olds, uh, you know, choosing stocks and the kids wow. are throw me away. Mm -hmm. Um, with the analysis that they do and the thought process that they that goes into which stocks they're choosing um, is really beyond what I thought that they could really grasp. Mm. It's not That's impressive. Yeah, yeah Eight, it's not girls. just <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not just saying I'm picking Nike because I like Nike. They're mm -hmm. saying, you know, I I'm picking Nike because I see that Under Armour is going through challenges and I think Nike is going to yield a better result in the long term. And it's really fascinating. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. This, the stock market game is a three or six month experience that mm -hmm. led by either classrooms or clubs. So this would be a great way for members if you're involved in a, a club like organization that you could use the stock market game as a tool um, with your um, with the group that you're working with. But it enables you to invest a $100,000 um, mock portfolio um, and it's um, stocks, bonds, mutual funds um, for the more advanced um, group like adults or, or high schoolers, you can do short selling and some other sort of advanced type of investing that, um, you know, allows mm -hmm. you to learn how these um, how these things happen and it allows the kids to really apply what's happening in the real world to how that impacts the economic world as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful tool and we love it and we're using it in classrooms really across the state. Um, so, and we want to expand that to more classrooms and that's um, one of the ways that our partners help us and I will talk a little bit more about that later. Great. In addition to the stock market game, we also offer something called the Maryland Personal Finance Challenge Competition, and that's for high schoolers, and that's really high school teams um, come together, typically in the spring, to compete head-to-head um, -head against other teams. It's sort of an academic sport, in a sense, um, on their personal finance knowledge. So they get together, start getting together in the fall, and they start reading, <laughs> practicing, and discussing to prepare for that big competition. Last year, we had a preliminary competition in Hartford County where um, the Hartford County Schools decided that they wanted to do a preliminary round. So we did a competition in October of, mm. to get a county champion. And then they sent the county champion onto the state level. But um, that has been a phenomenal program where mm. Um, students really get to apply all kinds of knowledge that they can take with them from, you know, what the impact of a bad credit score is um, to um, anything from banking on to how to handle tax situations. So it's a really um, interesting program that's led either again by a club leader or a teacher um, guiding these kids along. Mm, sounds fantastic. Yeah. Really, like really important. Yeah. Likewise, on the economic side, we have a similar program that is called the National Economics Challenge, where um, kids are competing at the high school level as um, experts in economics. And both the Personal Finance Challenge and the Economics Challenge, the state winner goes on to the national competition. And I'm so excited that last week, two teams from Mount Hebron High School and Howard County took the national championship. So. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations yeah. to them. That is thrilling. Oh, wow. That's really it, great. So there are great. two divisions and Mount Hebron won both divisions. So that is awesome. Very good for exciting. them. 
very, very excited. That's awesome. Yeah, so Great we're news. thrilled to have that victory here. And um, the kids themselves sent me videos to talk about what the experience was that we'll be showing um, on June 4th as part of our annual student <coughs> celebration that we'll be doing online. So I have information at the end. Hopefully you all can tune in to see that. But um, the teams last year, they won, this is their second time winning. They actually won last year as well. And they went on to the National Economic Olympiad in St. Petersburg, Russia. And they came wow. So huge opportunity, not only for the kids to expand their wealth of knowledge, but also to give them opportunities that they may not have ever had to travel and interact with economists, and other kids um, with a similar mindset and really changes the trajectory of their lives. So that is a, what a terrific life experience. My goodness. Yeah, that's amazing. Really, yeah. really powerful and impactful. Yeah. Yeah. And then mm. on the younger kids side, um, we have something called the uh, poster contest, but it's uh, a picture is worth a thousand words poster contest. And what we're really looking for is for um, kids to make artistic interpretations of economics and personal finance concepts. So they um, send us drawings of things from saving and investing to what markets are, um, what opportunity cost is, something people don't quite understand in, in adult life sometimes. Mm -hmm everything. Um, so um, those posters are a critical learning tool for the elementary and middle school students and we love seeing them every year. We got more than 2,000 entries um, for the 2020 contest. Wow and don't you make a calendar out of those? I know you have in the past so will you continue to do that? So we actually we've always done a calendar but for this year I've actually been thinking about not doing the calendar only because I think people are moving away from hanging paper calendars in their offices and instead I'd like to do a display of the posters at the comptroller's office or somewhere else in Annapolis for financial literacy month which is April so um, if you all tell me you love the calendar and you want me to keep doing it I'd be happy to respond to that but I think a lot of us now are keeping our calendar in Outlook or on our phone, and it's making the, the calendar um, on paper not as valuable as it once was. Mm. So I'm um, always looking for feedback. So if you guys think that that's something that's important, I if will. If we think of something else, we'll let you know. Yes. So. Yeah. A lot of I'm looking at adding some new programs this year that are more relevant to kids. I actually have teenagers in my house, and we've talked about what about doing a video contest? So I'm thinking about doing something like that where mm -hmm. students send me videos telling me um, their opinion on different topics or describing a personal finance topic um, so that we can understand that they have learned it. I mean, can see that demonstrated. Um, for those of you who have teenagers, there's also an app called TikTok that you may be aware of which is a really fun little video um, program. And I'm thinking about a TikTok-based competition as well um, to see the kids maybe um, using music to integrate into um, sharing a personal finance concept. Um, Keeping it all relevant and, uh, uh, and current under today's conditions. Yep, great yeah, idea, great yeah. idea. I mean, we've got to keep them engaged and the best totally. way to do it is to be on their level. So I'm excited about adding some of those programs. That sounds great. And then the other area that the council is involved in that I think is important to all of you members is advocating for the expansion of personal finance education um, to bring more financial education and more economics education to students mm -hmm. and make that a priority in every county and statewide. But that is something that we do through our affiliate organization called for financial literacy. That's an important part of the council. And through that, we also participate in the, a couple of the county-based programs as well. For those of you who are in Anne Arundel County, there's an Anne Arundel coalition that's working closely with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And there's also one in Prince George's County um, that we are very active in as well. 
if you are in a county that has a similar um, coalition or group that meets to try to encourage more financial education, we would love to get involved in those as well. So let us know and we'll be happy to join in and add resources. To Terrific, thank you. Um, along those lines, I wanted to share, after talking with Ellen, sort of what the state of financial education is in Maryland. Where, where are we? Um, what are the kids actually learning? And how does that happen? So we are one of the, um, about a, a few dozen states that do not have a graduation requirement in either economics or personal finance. Um, so in lieu of that, we have something called state standards, which means that the Maryland State Department of Education has six standards that they want taught in K through 12, actually, sorry, third grade through 12th grade. They aren't standards in kindergarten, first and second grade for some reason. But um, they ask that those standards be incorporated into the existing curriculum. What we find is while that's a great start, it leads to really uneven instruction because what one county is doing is not necessarily as robust as what another county is doing. Mm -hmm. There's also no um, accountability. So there's no way to know because there's no testing whether there's any real skills development um, that's happening in, with the kids. So, the standards are, are great, um, and that's the approach that our state has taken right now, but we would like to see more accountability and more expansion. And, and honestly, personally, I'd like to see a graduation requirement statewide. Amen to that. So uh, I know we've, uh, the Maryland Society has actually met with um, one of the delegates in Montgomery County and tried to get some information from them about mm -hmm. how, uh, where that, requirement sits in the education process in the Montgomery County schools. And so we're going to be trying to work with them to push a little harder to try and get it to be a county requirement, because obviously it isn't. But we do note that PG just passed that requirement this past April. So congratulations to your organization, MCFL, and everybody else who might have been involved. And I, if I'm understanding correctly, it was uh, really pushed through by students, which is really, really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So there are eight counties that have a graduation requirement with Prince George's being the most recent and it was very exciting just prior to the um, quarantine lockdown. Um, I attended the Board of Education meeting and it was there were a dozen students that came before the Board of Education and pleaded. Honestly, there were high school students pleaded for the, the graduation requirement mm -hmm. and we talked about their personal situations and something that you know we don't often think about is that a lot of people think that kids learn how to manage their money at home but if you are in a family that doesn't have those skills um, it just creates generational poverty because the skills aren't handed down from one to the other so we really mm -hmm. address um, those kids that can't learn it at home. And that was something that the Prince George's County students really discussed in detail was that their parents don't have the skills. Some of the students are, are children of immigrants and their parents have been taken advantage of because of their lack of knowledge. And um, they just really were so passionate um, that they swayed the Board of Education members to incorporate the requirement it's going to roll out with the freshman class next year um, that they'll have to have a course. And, and we're just thrilled um, to see that happen. And we're working closely with Prince George's County Public Schools to give them resources and training to make sure that when they're rolling this out that the teachers are prepared. So it's just so exciting. Congratulations, that is just really exciting and wonderful news, really great stuff. Yeah, um, and- mm, Amazing. I, Prince George's County is one of the top 20 school districts in the nation by size. Mm. So in impacting um, students, it's a very large number of families there that are going to benefit from having that knowledge going forward. Terrific. Yeah. Can't get the word out fast enough. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
some um, just some short facts I wanted to share about teachers in general. Um, and I put up these um, graphics from our infographic to mm -hmm. give more color. But when you look at teachers and you look at what is required to prepare a teacher for the classroom, so their college education, 60% of teachers have never had a personal finance or economics course at all before being a teacher. Um, so they have zero background and they're as, as ignorant in some cases as their students are. So that's where really preparing the teachers to have the confidence to share the information is really important to our work. And I think that the council is the only organization really focused on teacher training. So you can see that in the statistics I'm showing here, what mm -hmm. the of investing money in teachers is doing to change their behavior. And again, we, we're we looking like you for behavioral change, not just a one day mm -hmm. uh, type of uh, training. So you can see that it's not only impacting them in the classroom, but it's impacting them personally as well. Um, so it's just huge. I can't say enough for um, how beneficial this is. And then imagine the number of students they end up connecting with, which you mentioned earlier on, you know, how, how long term this can be. So it's really terrific. Yeah, and Ellen, you talked to me about um, credit card applications and things mm -hmm. when you go to college. I mean, those teachers have very personal stories of how they got in trouble themselves in some cases right. uh, through um, you know, taking those um, offers, things like that. And so by giving them sort of skills, they want to share sort of where they may have uh, made mistakes and, and correcting them. The sad thing about today is that you really can't afford to make mistakes the way that maybe when I was uh, a college student or you, Ellen. Mm -hmm. Is um, it, our society is very unforgivable, especially in Maryland, where you have jobs that require you to have a background check mm -hmm. and a credit check. Um, you have apartments that require a credit check. So if you yes. make a mistake, that mistake could keep you from a job that could really decrease your income for your entire career. Right. So, so true. Right. The, you know, these, these skills that you will learn in that financial literacy piece are lifelong lessons that will carry you through um, long into your retirement years. And mm -hmm. it would be truly uh, very important that they get that training early on so that they can make better decisions moving forward so that they don't find themselves in these precarious positions, taking on too much debt or, you know what happened there, yeah. You still there? Okay, we lost Ellen for a minute. So I'm just gonna continue on and hopefully she'll be able to join back in with us. But I wanted to talk a little bit about supporting our work and how we work together. Um, we are very fortunate that as a nonprofit organization, we receive support for our full-time staff positions and our overhead from Towson University in the state of Maryland. So what that enables us to do is in working with partners, it allows us to channel every resource we receive from a partner directly into impacting students and teachers in the classroom versus having to use uh, those funds for um, staples and paper and, and salaries, which I think is so important. Oh, here comes Ellen. And- um, Okay, I apologize, sorry about that. So I am back, can you see me? I can see you, that's okay. Great, sorry, yeah, so I have another meeting scheduled for another clock that I have to get to. So okay. I do apologize, so they kicked me off because it's already, uh, it was already set up in my system as well, so um, yeah. Do we have a couple more minutes, Ellen? Um, I can spare a couple, a couple more minutes, sure. Okay, great. So, so we, we've worked closely with MSATP on, volunteer, on volunteers for classrooms, and mm -hmm. so just um, general spreading the word about um, our organization and the resources we bring. Um, MSATP also was generously enough, generous enough to sponsor the um, Teacher Capability Awards program this past spring. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do those in person, but we'll have their sponsorship for the program next spring to recognize three amazing teachers 
who are um, teaching personal finance and economics in both elementary, middle, and high schools. So that's been fantastic. But additional ways that you and your clients can help us in terms of funding is um, you know, $500 can allow us classroom to play the stock market game uh, for the full year, which is a great experience. And $2,500 if you have a corporate client or someone of higher means can um, sponsor a teacher training institute. And any amount, as little as $50 that's contributed to our organization can really impact students by you know, paying for resources, books, things along those lines that we can then share for free with teachers. Um, we do take donations through um, our website. We also take them through PayPal. And we are actually getting more up to speed with donor advised funds. I think is something that is becoming more popular now that the changes in charitable giving have been implemented at the federal level. So those are all ways that you can um, partner with us on a financial basis. And you can also lend support as um, experts for us too when we need speakers. Typically we'll reach out to Ellen and to Sandy and they can help us source someone who it has expertise in, in area that we're looking for but if you have something special that you'd like to offer I'd love for you to reach out to me and let me know that you have an interest and where your interest lies. We also need classroom volunteers to coach teams for the personal finance challenge. Um, we need help with the stock market game in classrooms and the econ challenge. So if you really want to be hands-on with students in your community we can make that happen for you. Great, Julie, thank you so much. My goodness, you've got quite, quite a bevy of uh, opportunities for us to either participate in and ways that we can contribute as well. So thank, thank you so, so much. It's been just a wonderful, um, wonderful opportunity for us to get to hear direct from you guys uh, and uh, working with us and keeping our partnership alive and well, during, especially during this pandemic and moving forward. Right. And if I could just close with our student awards program is being moved to a YouTube format and we'll pr be premiering that on June 4th at 7 p.m. where you'll hear directly from the kids and I really encourage you if you can to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen in to that wonderful video that we're going to release on June 4th. So Okay, so that's much. awesome. That's yeah. terrific. And we're so, so happy for your organization as well. Uh, we'll continue to do our best to support you both financially and with our membership and uh, providing some of that assistance in the teacher training and right. uh, doing what we can in any other way that we can uh, find members and wherever you need the help. So let us know. You know definitely keep us in touch. We can put that uh, email blast out and let people know, you know what you need assistance with as it arises. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you.